Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. So thanks for tuning into my podcast. This is going to be airing on December 1st, 2016. And I'll just say that I am very, very, very grateful and very thankful. I just had a Thanksgiving, visited my relatives out in the country, out in the woods. And I will say today, I also went to my creative writing group. We meet at a bookstore in Seattle and once a week and we do creative free writing. I was actually going to read some of that. Today's podcast will probably be a mix of improv, monologue, some poetry, spoken word, recorded music, and random surprises depending on what my mood does. So I'm going to read for you part of my creative writing from today. Gratitude, gratitude in the pod casting the, the self in, in shadow. Self in shadow. Light, gaining Light gaining sight, sight flying, sight, flying sonic, flying, audio, sonic flying, audio, audio, paint, audio, paint, resting paint, eyes, resting eyes, resting eyes, audible audition, audible audition, audible travel audition, on budget, travel on full time freelancer me, freelancer me, read from my book, read from my book, add new poems, add new poems, fear of scarcity, of scare of fiercity, in our fair city. City. In our fair city, in our fair voice city. work, in our fair voice zoo, work. Clean voice zoo clean rest, rest. Zoo linear rest. lines, linear lines, linear lines, funnier drive, funnier drive, consuming mind, consuming mind, steered blind, steered always blind. kind, always kind. finding always treasure, finding always treasure, finding treasure, treasure. Streaks, vary. Treasure. streaks vary, carried, carried. pondering carried. land, pondering more land. content, pondering more content. Content. No, fluff. More content. no fluff, huff and puff, no puff. criticism, criticism, don't have to cater, don't have to cater. Don't have time, to time don't entitled, have time. entitled. Time. Hang a string, hang a string. Bada boo, bada bing. Bada boo, bada opinion bada on, boo, this bada 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 on this matter, on this matter. Letting this dissolve, letting this dissolve, revolve, this evolve, this evolve, evolve, dissolve, evolve, dissolve. Evolve. Jam packed schedule, -packed schedule. -packed tasty, schedule. Strudel. tasty strudel, tasty strudel, not rude, tasty strudel. Not but sometimes rude. nude. Not sometimes just want to play, just want to play, balance, just balance. solitude, companionship, companionship. work, play, travel, play. rest, travel, travel, art making, rest. show and tell, show and tell, cast a spell, cast enjoy, a spell. The enjoy the smell, liberate from perfectionist mind, be what you want the leaders to be, money hoarding wealthy, again, fear of scarcity. Fear of scarcity, scare of fiercity, scare of fiercity. In, our in our fair city, Temple Grandin, Temple Grandin. Temple nurture Grandin. your nurture gifts, your gifts. Yes. forgive yourself for your yes. flaws, yes. Tom Petty yes. stories, Tom Petty rebel, Tom wounded Petty. healer, rebel. wounded rebel. kids, rebel. gifts. So those are some random rambling on from my creative free write today. What I usually do is meet with my friends and one guy writes, uh, he's writing a novel and he has a magical way of writing. This one lady that is at the group, she uh, writes fiction, short stories, di lots of dialogue. And I tend to write random, rhymy, either diary entries that I read out loud to my friends or just like rhyming random poems that I later polish and record and add echo to. So I might next read from my book. I self-published a book. As you know, some of you might know, I am mostly a visual artist, mostly photography, have a background in graphic design, and grew up with an, a visual artist mother who encouraged me to be creative and create visual art and lots of art books around the house and interesting art on the walls. She introduced me, my mother introduced me to Hunderwasser, my favorite painter slash philosopher slash sort of semi-architect, not officially an architect, but he believed in helping redesign the facades of buildings to harmonize with nature. A lot of Americans have never heard of Hunderwasser. So if you have not, you might want to look him up. If you like Gustav Klimt paintings and or the architecture of Gaudi, you would probably appreciate Hunderwasser. That is spelled H-U-N-D-E-R-T-W-A-S-S-E-R, -S -S -E Hunderwasser. Love his work. So a lot of my abstract um, paintings and drawings are inspired by Hunderwasser, but also inspired by the shapes and the repeating infinite intricate patterns 
microcosm, macrocosm, uh, repetitive patterns that I see in nature, like plants, like like tree bark, plants, the natural geometry that you see in nature, all of that stuff. And also airplanes. I love to fly in airplanes and travel. And I noticed that some of my abstract drawings I do, when I look at them, I it reminds me of when I've been in airplanes looking straight down at the earth and seeing like the patterns of the shapes of the land, of like farmland or natural, you know, geographical topography of planet earth, whatever that is. I don't know all the scientific terms, but I just love those shapes. And I self-published a book called Art Identity and the Sacred. I went to graphic design school after high school and then I got into modeling and hitchhiked through Mexico and went to Australia and did all this traveling and had all these rocky relationships and it's a long story and then I got into art modeling and then I went back to school to finish my BA degree. I went to Antioch University in Seattle and Finally got my driver's license and bought a used car, a teeny tiny little fuel efficient car. So I finally can drive a car. And part of my final project for finishing my BA degree was to, I invented my own. Okay, try again. Is this working again? Okay, the thing got unplugged. Oh my gosh. Okay, the magic of editing. I'm going to splice this together and fix it. So I invented my own final project for my BA symposium, which was I wrote a book. I wrote, and mostly it's a visual art book, and I self-published it on blurb.com. And I made a video called Art Identity in the Sacred. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can uh, see it and listen to it. Art Identity and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. And then I did a public talk at my university. And I'm going to read from the introduction to my book, Art Identity and the Sacred, coming next. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen Radio Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Art Identity and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen self-published book artist statement this book is a container to place ideas about the connection between making art developing a sense of self and feeling connected to the sacred beyond the individual I work improvisationally with cameras writing poetry spoken word drawing painting abstractly inspired by the shapes and repeating patterns I see in nature being a spontaneous photographer and abstract artist is similar to the disciplines of meditation and spiritual practice. I spell art as art, lowercase a, capital R, lowercase t, in quotes, to draw attention to the aesthetic in the creative process being about a sensitivity to the literal shapes and unique creations that happen when one is engaged in making art. I enjoy how the word looks and see this as symbolic to what art is. I am a dancer when I shoot photos. I move in a graceful motion looking into my camera frame until the shape looks right. I capture what is naturally there but in a way that abstracts it and makes the viewer notice something new and different about ordinary physical reality. Because of my emphasis on being in the present moment and my love for travel and being open to life as it unfolds without planning, I do not limit myself to photographing any one subject. I do many self-portraits which I call self-portals. I see them as doorways into aspects of my psyche and, I want re and what I want released and expressed. I also capture urban decay reflections, shadows on water, mud puddles, through transparent surfaces such as windows, etc., multi-layered effects. I also enjoy photographing animals, wildlife, water droplets on plants, abstract close-ups of textures, clouds reflected in water. All the subject matter is related and it's about the Tao, 
of allowing life to unfold in the present moment and being surprised by synchronicities and paradoxes as they arise and dissolve. Often I feel I wander and randomly shoot photos, and then when I edit my work I see a theme and pattern to what I'm doing. This amazes me and informs me that my subconscious mind is speaking through me. I also paint abstractly and write poetry that I hear in my head. I use a similar approach to all mediums. It's intuitive and I feel guided by energy within me. My process is very kinesthetic. Some of the spiritual practice characteristics shared with photography are freedom from the sense of self, receptivity, spontaneity, acceptance, and non-attachment. Creative photography can be seen as a communion between the self and the environment with no sense of self-separation. A spontaneous photographer responds in the present moment and lets things happen. The photograph almost takes itself. My best photographs, and I will also say poetry, have been done this way. Suddenly free and open to what is around me, having never seen that kind of light or shape before. My heart and mind are in love with what I see and I shoot when it feels right. This really cannot be planned. People tell me after seeing my photographs of shapes in water, and mud puddles and chrome, they now notice things out walking they never saw before. Art can be transformational for both the artist and the viewer of the work, flowing with life and not rebelling against it, accepting what is pretty or ugly, both equally being equanimous. Equanimous. I did a couple 10-day Vipassana uh, silent meditation retreats, and they were emphasizing us to learn how to be equanimous. I'll talk more about that later. All these spiritual principles are used in creative photography. All my work, no matter what medium, is approached as improvisational, intuitive practice and is not planned out but felt in the moment and allowed to happen. So that's me, Shannon Kringen, reading the intro to my book uh, that I self-published, Art, Identity, and the Sacred. So I have my contents of my book are Chapter 1, Art, Identity, and the Sacred. That's like the introduction I just read. Chapter 2 is Abstract Paintings and Drawings. Chapter 3 is Visual Haiku, which is kind of more minimalistic photography mostly about the shape and the texture and kind of more simple. Chapter four is nature, both plants and animals, I think. And then chapter five is urban decay, like old rusty chipped metal and paint and just old like graffiti and funky texture. I took an amazing trip to Edinburgh, Scotland a few years ago and took some great photos of really interesting graffiti there. Uh, Chapter six is self-portraits. Lots of face paint, lots of Goddess Kring style selfies. Some of them is reflected in chrome and mud puddles in water. One of my most amazing self portraits I took was in Nor- Oslo, Norway. As the sun was going down and the wind was blowing my hair in a certain way, I leaned over, saw my reflection in a mud puddle and took a beautiful photo. And then I, everyone thinks it's photoshopped. I definitely exaggerated the contrast, but the the image itself looks like it's two photos superimposed, one on top of the other, but it's just what you see is what you get real life, but the way I photograph reflections sometimes somehow looks like two photos superimposed. I also sometimes do superimpose things, but um, that's a whole nother story. So chapter seven is shadows. That's like silhouettes and shadows. Some of them are selfie silhouettes and shadows. Some of them are just shadows I see of trees and plants and animals and just interesting shapes I see that are shadows. Chapter eight is naturism, which is nude photos of me going to nudist naturist gatherings where everyone is nude and natural together. I did some cool underwater photography with a waterproof camera photos. My friend and I took those. And random surprises at the end, hand-painted shoes. And I think at the end of my book, there's a poem I wrote. Here it is. Kring Speak Poetry. 
Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the cring. Catch the wind song spiral drive, crack the code, left and right node. I present the present, desert the desert. Exercise bring, exorcism cleanse. Shuk shuka, shuk shuka, shuk shuka. Volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams. Inner energy life force, come forth. Lightning seed of green, eyes on rising steam. So those are some lines from a poem. And I close the book by saying, I've been painting, uh, hand painting shoes, hand, I've been hand painting shoes since 1986 when I was uh, graduated from high school. I made a pair for musician Tori Amos and gave them to her in person. She wore them on stage for her concert in Seattle in 1996 at the Paramount Theater. I have since painted many more pairs of shoes. Ask me and I'll paint your shoes. Thanks for looking at my book. I believe the arts are a healing force in the universe and I encourage everyone to follow their creative impulses. Music, visual art, theater, dance, creative writing, poetry, filmmaking. Do you want to create? follow your bliss so that's kind of my my uh my inspirational message and sometimes when i feel um depressed or lost i actually read the words that i just spoke out loud to you and remind myself of the healing power of creativity especially now since we have uh such a wacky um presidential election in the United States that just happened. A lot of people are scared and upset about what's happening. I don't want to ramble on about those details. But I will say that the world needs all the more love and kindness and creativity than ever before. In spite of some of the negative things happening right now, we do need, I think, to fight for our rights and fight for what we believe in and pay attention to what's going on and take action when we can and we also need to remember to actually celebrate life and enjoy life and not get so caught up in watching the news and the media that we we lose sight not to be oblivious to what's going on and in denial but i think sometimes with mass media the way it is the way they repeat stories over and over and they maybe take things out of context it's easy to get caught up in the drama of what's on the news and to forget about your own personal life in your local community and what can you do in your local community to help things and to love yourself and love your neighbor, love your family, love your friends, love plants, animals, take care of the earth, do what you can to fight for your rights, you know, call congressmen, senators, etc. write letters, do what you can political activism wise. But also, it's good to touch your local community and do what you can in your actual personal life. You know, be the change you want to see, etc. I also wanted to say something about calling myself a goddess. When I say goddess, Kring, I think some people think I mean worship me, I'm a goddess and you're not. But what I actually mean by goddess Kring is, is to remind myself that I'm a sacred being. I'm kind of a very spiritual person. And I think within all of us, there's the saying in India called Namaste. N-A-M-A-S-T-E, Namaste. I think the first time I ever heard that was George Harrison saying it. And I looked it up because, you know, I love the Beatles. And when George Harrison says something, I pay attention. So <laughs> what can I say? Um, may George Harrison rest in peace. Great man. So and he's, he was really good friends with my favorite songwriter, Tom Petty, who widens my jetty. I'll talk more about that later, too, about why I'm inspired by Tom Petty so much. Aside from loving his music, there's things about his personal story that really, really resonate with me and remind me to believe in myself and, you know, go for your dreams and don't give up. So, and and if you don't know if you don't know what your dreams are and you get lost, that's okay. You can just get back on the horse when you figure it out again. So, I will say namaste. George Harrison said that and 
uh, Sting, Be Yourself No Matter What They Say, and a wonderful song called Englishman in New York, one of my favorite Sting songs. So I think that's from 1987, Dream of the Blue Turtles. I love that album, the Dream of the Blue Turtles, um, Sting. Yeah, great album. So let's just say I love Tori Amos. I love Tom Petty. I love Sting. I love Tom Waits. I love all kinds of different, like lots of music, Miles Davis, Jimi Hendrix, lots of different, lots of rock and roll, I guess you'd say. But let me just say one thing is that um, Namaste, when I say goddess, I tend to think that within all of us, some people think it's blasphemous to call yourself a god or a goddess. But I think the opposite. I think that if you're a spiritual person and you believe that the universe is created by like, I don't really believe in God, like a man in the sky who judges as good or bad. But I believe in the spiritual conscious energy that creates the universe and that there's an intelligent organizing force. I think there's some chaos and some order and it kind of does a dance. So I would say that to think that there is a goddess within me helps me rise to the occasion of being the highest self that I can be. And when I think I'm just human, I'm like, oh, I'm only human. And that sort of gives me an excuse to kind of screw up and make a lot of mistakes. Oh, I'm just human. Can't really expect much from me because I'm just human. Well, I think it's better to, to think of yourself as a god or goddess where like within you there is a sacred energy that connects all life. And so when people say namaste, and they bow down and put their hand on their heart and sort of bow. What it means is, is that the sacred in me that's totally connected to you greets the sacred in you that's totally connected to me. So it's kind of like you're acknowledging the invisible spiritual energy or love, whatever you want to call it, consciousness, love, unity, oneness, you know, whatever energy that connects all life. And I, and I include plants and animals when I say that, you know, I think it's kind of speciesist when humans think um, that we are the only, you know, life form that matters. I mean, gosh, you know, plants and animals, the diversity in nature is so beautiful and we need the ecosystem. So gods and goddesses, I, I think within every man, there's a god and with every woman, there's a goddess. And also there's gods and goddesses within all of us. Like I do believe there's male and female energy within every person. So there's probably a god inside me as well as a goddess. And, and if you're a man listening to me, there's a god and goddess inside of you. And I think that every person, male, female, trans, um, gender, whatever you want to call yourself, all the full diversity of, of humans, there's gods and goddesses within us. There's like an energy, a wise energy, you know, a spiritual energy. So when I say goddess kring, I mean that. I also mean because I'm a nude model for artists and I'm voluptuous and I'm curvy, my weight kind of goes up and down, but I'm generally not skinny and I'm curvy, although I'm kind of athletic, but I'm kind of curvy and not real skinny. And you go into the spiritual bookstores and you see the goddess statues. And so and, you know, the, the ancient, um, uh, lithic, what do you call it? Petroglyphs that the ancient, um, stone carvings that ancient people made of the very, very voluptuous goddess, you know? So I call myself that too, cause I have a bit of a belly, a bit of a Buddha belly. I have a bit of a Buddha belly, a bit of a Buddha belly. So this is Shannon Kring and you're listening to Goddess Kring. Some of my philosophy about calling myself a goddess is what I was just saying. And I have philosophies about this kind of stuff. And um, I am a natural person and I model nude for artists. And I will just say that I am so grateful that I'm here recording my voice. I'm thinking about trying to do some voice work, audition for voice work, narrating books, reading things, doing accents, doing, you know, playing with my voice, or maybe I'll just keep doing this podcast and call it good. But um, I make a full time living as a freelance person modeling for art and medical students. And I've also done a lot of traveling. I'm low income. Uh, but I have gone to Europe seven or eight or nine times. I don't even remember how many, not to sound like I'm bragging. I'm actually amazed myself that I've traveled so much. I've been to Mexico and Australia and to several European countries. I belong to a website called couchsurfing.com. So I am able to find people that want to host me and stay with them for free and learn about their culture. 
I've met some really nice people this way. And I have a friend that lives in Norway, a friend that lives in England. Uh, I met somebody that lives in Scotland. And I know somebody that lives in St. Petersburg, Russia, and various different people. I would love to go to Sydney, Australia. If anybody listening is from Sydney, hey, let's let's talk about Sydney. I would love to go to Sydney. I would love to go to China and Japan. I would love to visit Thailand, um, Africa, South Africa, maybe um, Zambia. I'm not sure. So I would love to just travel all over the world. I, I sometimes daydream that if I had an unlimited amount of money, what would I do? Because I think that that's actually a very good question to ask yourself. If you had an unlimited amount of money, what would you do? Because people like to put off their dreams and postpone their dreams until they have money. But I think that there are some things you could probably do right now without a lot of money, whether you have money or not. So I like to daydream about what would I do if I had an unlimited amount of money? My fantasy would be to have solar panels everywhere to somehow help there be more solar panels in the world to buy a huge amount of land and let it be a wildlife sanctuary to find out how you do that. How do you help protect land? I would love to plant trees, protect plants and animals in the ecosystem. I would love to get two or three deep tissue massages for my own uh, self. I would love to get deep tissue massages two or three times a week, you know, an hour to 90 minutes each. That would be wonderful. Every once in a while I splurge and get myself a nice long hour-long massage. I love massage, deep tissue. I would love to travel around the world and publish books on my travels. I would love to make podcasts and videos and do slideshow presentations of my travel and just talk about why I'm inspired by visiting other cultures. It helps me stay in the present moment when I take off and fly somewhere that I've never been. I love to create art based on my travels and I do kind of, you know, my spontaneous Taoist type improv photography. I was also going to say I sort of taught myself how to be a figure model. I never took any classes in how to be a model. I just, I definitely studied art history years before and so I was already familiar with a lot of famous paintings and the way models pose and I'm also um, have a design background so I kind of knew that It was aesthetically pleasing to be asymmetrical and to kind of twist and turn your body. I also love dance. I was never really a dancer, but I always felt like a dancer. Like as a kid, I took ballet and and, uh, tap dance and modern dance and ballet and stuff like that as a kid, but I was never really all that great at it in terms of following people in unison. But I think that my figure modeling Uh, I was good at it intuitively, naturally, partly because I'm kind of an improvisational person that comes natural to me. I play piano improvisationally. I draw and paint abstract designs improvisationally. And when I figure model, I make up my poses on the spot. People will suggest that I pose in certain ways, but I generally just make it up on the spot and it's just improvisational and intuitive. So maybe I'll talk more about that. So thanks for listening. And I wanted to say my podcast is on every week on Hollow Earth Radio right now. I think it's uh, 3 to 4 p.m. on Pacific Standard Time in the United States. Uh, But it's also on 24-7 archived on my Mixcloud, my YouTube, and my Patreon, as well as my, let's see. YouTube, Patreon, Mix, oh, Bandcamp. I just put it on Bandcamp. It's all free. All of my podcasts are completely free to listen to. So it's non-commercial, Creative Commons license, and I love to share. So my website is shannonkringen.com, or you can just Google Goddess Kring or Shannon Kringen and find my email to write me with questions or comments. And I mostly do photography And I love to create and do show and tell. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I have thousands of photos of on that I've taken on Flickr. I offer them free to publish under the Creative Commons license. I'm also a big believer in that since I can make a living and get paid to be a model. I uh, don't really need to make my art for money. Uh, I'm not against making money with my art, but I I feel like it's kind of a, a wonderful freedom 
freedom and embracing grace, moonshone face. It's just lovely that I can just make my art the way I want to make it and just put it online and share it. And I have sold art, you know, here and there. But my message is that if you love to do something, do it. And don't think that you have to make money at it for it to be considered a success. I feel like if you create something that you love and you put it into the world and other people appreciate it, whether they give you money for it or they just appreciate it for free, you know, if they're loving what you're doing and you're loving what you're doing, that's success in itself, especially if you're inspiring other people to be creative or to travel, or try something new, or just to feel more connected. And I also wanted to talk about Temple Grandin. I really love her message. She is an autistic woman in her 60s. I think she's from Scottsdale, Arizona. And I love her TED Talk, Temple Grandin. Look her up, T-E-M-P-L-E. G-R-A-N-D-I-N. I had the privilege of listening to her speak uh, at Microsoft here in Seattle. I, I know somebody that works at Microsoft and Temple Grandin's um, talk was sold out at, at Town Hall in Seattle, but I was able to get a free guest pass and go to Microsoft uh, to the campus and listen to her talk a few years ago. And I took a couple pictures of her and she's very inspirational. Her message is mostly... Uh, her experience of what it's like to be autistic. And she's also an expert in animal behavioral science and has helped uh, slaughterhouses be a little bit more humane. If we're going to slaughter animals, we may as well do it in a more humane way. And she understands cows and what makes them stress out and what calms them down. It's fascinating, actually, because she can go into a slaughterhouse. I mean, I could not go into a slaughterhouse. I would freak out. I would probably scream, cry, faint, want to you know, save all the animals, she can actually calmly go into a slaughterhouse and look, observe and see the cruelty and then say, hey, you know, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it this way. So she cares enough about the animals, like she's sensitive enough and has empathy. She cares about the cows and their suffering enough to want to help them. And yet she's she's a little bit detached. So the point where she doesn't freak out. So she's like her autism is like the perfect balance of being sensitive and empathetic and yet being a little bit detached and scientific and able to focus on the science of how to help things better, you know, get better. And she was also smart enough to know that the cattle industry doesn't really care so much about the welfare of the cows. They just care about making a better profit. So she's like, hey, I can save you money. The cows will suffer less and be less stressed out if you do my ideas And you'll make more profit because you won't have to hire as many people to fix problems because there won't be as many problems. And she was right. And so she was able to help that. And she was also able to tell people what it's like to be autistic. And her message is to to focus. And this, this could apply to all kids and even adults. Focus on what you're good at and try to build on your gifts and try to nurture your skills and your gifts instead of fixating on what's wrong with you and what you're bad at and trying to fit in and be normal and, and, and try to fix all your flaws just so you can be perfect and normal or whatever. To me, normal means be yourself. So if you're authentic, you know, authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange liquid glow, anger takes its toll blowing status quo. When I say that poem, what I mean is be yourself. And and to me, you will be a lot happier if you're your authentic self. And then whoever doesn't want you to be yourself, well, they're not your real friend anyway. So to heck with those people. If they don't like who you really are, why would you want to be fake just to please somebody else? It's better to be yourself and trust that you will have some friends who like the real you. So Temple Grandin's message is to like, you know, if you have an autistic kid and they can't tie you their shoes, don't worry about it. If they're really good at math or music or science or art or opera singing or whatever, singing and dancing or acting or, or science or something, help them build on those gifts and just get them Velcro shoes. So in other words, if you're dyslexic or you have learning disability or you have a mental problem, emotional problem, or you're in a wheelchair, you have a physical problem, whatever it is, Don't fixate on that. Learn how to cope with your flaws as best you can. 
but focus on nurturing your talents, nurturing what you're already good at and build on that because that will take you a lot farther than trying to fix your flaws. And so cope with your flaws, try to adapt and cope with whatever your deficits are, and then emphasize getting, uh, receiving support for building up what you're good at. So I've, I've actually done that. Like figure modeling is such a good job for me because I'm really good at staring off into space and daydreaming and being still. I'm comfortable being nude in front of people. I'm comfortable with everybody looking at me. It's for the purpose of drawing and painting. You know, in some ways I'm shy. Like I don't like going to dinner parties. I get really shy at parties. I don't like parties. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't even smoke marijuana. I just, I'm not into it. So there's some ways in which I'm uncomfortable socially, and yet I'm really good at being a figure model. And yet here I am recording my voice in my apartment by myself with my microphone and audacity, and I'm publishing this on a bunch of different public websites, and yet I'm totally comfortable doing this, and yet I don't like going to parties, and I don't like going to bars, and yet I can model in a bar. I recently got to model at a thing called Drink and Draw at Capitol Cider in Capitol Hill, and I was wearing a bodysuit and I posed on stage and everybody in the bar was drinking and it was loud and it was a little bit too loud for me. But I love the fact that I was modeling for these people and they clap for me and they drew and they do cool drawings of me and it was really fun. And, and I'm in like the summer solstice parade and the world naked bike ride and I body paint myself and I'm, you know, with in front of thousands of people in the street, practically naked, riding my bike and you know, as a political statement of, you know, love your body the way it is, trust nature, you know, be yourself, etc. I'm really comfortable doing that. I'm good at that. I'm actually really bad at going to parties. I'm really bad at certain kind of social situations. And yet I'm really good at these other artistic things that I do. And I'm really good at being a figure model. So I was going to say, there's probably something that you're really good at naturally, or that you can build on and practice on and get better at. And then there's probably things you're bad at. So you might not want to make yourself do things that you don't like to do. Like, you know, push yourself past your comfort zone sometimes. But why force yourself to do things you don't enjoy? So like there are some realistic artists who think that you have to master realism before you can do abstract art. And I just don't agree with that. I think that if you want to learn realism, do it. And if it's hard work, go ahead and practice and do it. But if you love abstract work and you're a good designer, like there's a lot of crappy abstract art in the world, in my opinion. Uh, my, des my background is in design and composition. And so when I see a, a piece of abstract art or realistic art, realistic art, you can judge based on, is it realistic? Does it look three-dimensional? Are there proportions and colors accurate? You can judge it on a mathematical level in that way. But then you can also say, well, is, is the design well done? Is it a good composition. Abstract art also has rules. Is the composition good? Is it well designed? Is it is it interesting? Does it make you want to keep looking at it? Or do you just look at it and think it's a big mess and you want to look away really quick? Then it's not really very good abstract art. But if you want to keep staring at it and it draws you in and it's aesthetically pleasing, to me that's good abstract art. So I was going to say do what you love and don't make yourself do things that you can't stand unless you absolutely have to. I feel like it is good to fantasize what would you do if you had unlimited amount of money because it's good to think, okay, well, is there any of this that I can do without having millions of dollars? Because most people would say they'd like to spend more time in nature. They'd like to relax more. They'd like to enjoy their life more. They want to do more art. They want to travel. Well, there are, like I'm living proof, there are ways to travel without a lot of money. I have gone on many, many trips and I have spent hardly any money. I find really good deals on airline tickets. You can use frequent flyer miles. You can stay with family or friends. I mean, there are ways to travel and just don't buy anything. Just, just buy food in the grocery store and drink water. And then you can walk around all day and not spend any money and take photographs. I mean, that's the way I travel as I mostly just love to just take photographs and I don't really spend hardly any money at all just on food and transportation. And I just love to, so basically what I'm saying is, is there are ways to do things without tons of money. 
And if you can afford it, you can also use money and do it. But I just feel like, you know, people can question the ways in which they spend their time and make choices based on what you really want to do and what you really love and let go of what you don't want. So this is like advice I need to also follow for myself. So thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring podcast radio. Thank you. Okay, here's a surprise for you. In 1980, I was 12 years old and I made some recordings and I found them on a cassette tape and I was able to digitize them into MP3. So now here's some funny thing. We had drillers at our house, people, electricians doing some drilling and I made this funny little clip. I think I was uh, sending, I missed my dad and I was sending him some audio tapes. Here we go. Shannon Kringen in 1980 when she was 12. Oh my gosh. They're not really the um, electricians are here and they're drilling and weird stuff, you know. I was just joking. <laughs> drilling and weird stuff, you know. I was just joking. <laughs> drilling and weird stuff, you know. I was just joking. <laughs> Okay, so now here's another surprise. In 1980, my friend Stephanie and I were really good friends on Whidbey Island, and we played the piano. We played Heart and Soul together, and we made this funny recording. So this is Stephanie and Shannon Kringen in 1980 doing a funny little recording of Heart and Soul on piano. Check it out. You can hear us talking as well as playing the piano together. The starting of the tape to Buzzy Wuzzy Muzzy Fuzzy from Shanny Penny Boopy Doopy Freaky Deaky and Steffy Weffy Miffy Peffy and Connie Barney Marnie Farney. And now we're going to do a story written by me and Stephanie and there's also music on the piano. The story, part one. There once was a little girl who played nothing but... this but she had nothing to add to it so she just kept playing it now there was another little girl who played nothing but she was bored with this also she had nothing to add to it so she just kept on playing it now one day the first little girl met the second Hi, my name's Schnoon. Hi, my name's The Jerk. I have a problem. I learned this part on the piano and it's so boring. So is mine, because I learned a part on the piano too. Let's go to your house and play them on your piano. Okay. So they went to Schnoon's house and played it on the piano. Here's my piece. So little did I know in 1980 that in uh, that like over 30 years later in 2016, I would be doing a podcast as a 48 year old. The 12 year old me would be blown away if she knew that the 48 year old me was going to be sharing the recordings that she made so many years ago on her podcast. And next up, we have a collaboration I did with, I think he calls himself Astro Blue. This is a poem I wrote called Incast the Outcast, Outcast the Incast. Increase cooperation, decrease the corporation. So this is our like five minute jam session. And then I have more music after that to, to play with you, to share with you on this playful show, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring and podcast. Again, I'm open to questions or comments, topic ideas, 
etc. In cast, out. Ejaculation, 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 ejaculation of my soul, of my soul. Totally out of rhythm now. Totally out of rhythm now. Totally out of rhythm now. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Stop. I put something on there. I put something on there. Oh, that's okay. What do you mean? Oh, the echo. I added it. Oh, the echo. Oh, oh,
So that was Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring and me, and a guy named Astro Blue. He goes by and he does um, music, and he did the guitar, and I did the words and the vocals, and I wrote, yeah, I wrote the lyrics and the vocals. And next is what I call Moody Final. Um, this other guy, Nibby Nebulous, and I did a musical thing together. I played the piano, and he plays the guitar. Check it out. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast. I do this every week for a full hour. It's really fun. Thank you so much for being here with me.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the uh, audio clips from me uh, from 1980 when I was 12 and my friends who made funny recordings. And I think it's because I missed my dad because we moved from California up to Washington, Whidbey Island. And my friend and I made, instead of writing my dad uh, letters, I think he sent me a tape deck or I don't remember how that happened, but um, because he wrote and recorded, you know, last week I played a couple songs my dad wrote, Gus Kringen, he wrote Feather and Slow Down. And I played that. And I think uh, this might be the same tape deck or tape recorder that I used to record. My dad recorded himself and then I recorded myself. So it's like we were sending each other audio tapes. So I made like instead of a letter again, I, I recorded my voice on an audio cassette tape and, and mailed it to my dad in California. And so I'm going to close the show. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm open to questions or comments or feedback. And if you want to do your own podcast, it's actually free. All you need is the free software program called Audacity and get yourself a microphone and have high-speed internet. And then you can sign up for a free uh, Bandcamp or Mix Cloud account. And then you can start, on, and also YouTube, and you can start uploading audio files for free and then just spread the word about it. So if you like to record your voice and you want to share poetry or music or monologues or interview your friends or have them interview you, you know, go for it. Do a podcast. It's really, really fun. I love recording like this. It's just fun, fun, fun. I'm like, I guess, an introverted extrovert. Like, I'm sort of an introspective person who likes to express myself and then share it with you here. So I encourage you to express yourself creatively. Do a podcast if you want. Check it out. So yeah, follow your bliss, everybody. I will seal it with a kiss. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I'm going to close with some music. Siyanko, rampa silan silan kan, siyanko, rampa silan silan kan, yanka, silati te ponce, silan kala ponce loko, silakan silati solo rampa, silan se, silan se lo ponce, kibo se. Silan, silan, gol, pans, yakon. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Sikotoko, Silati te ponce, silan kala ponce loco, silakan silati solo rompa, silan se, silan se lo ponce, kibo se, silan silan gola pans, yakon, silakan se, rosika rosika loco la pompa, yakon. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring.